But we just heard two to three more weeks. I thought they were finished today. And they are finished today if you look at what's happening. I thought they were going to be finished today, and they want two to three more weeks. The judge asked him, and play right into the judge's hands. The judge is so happy about two to three more weeks. Because they all want to keep me off the campaign trail. That's all this is about. This is about election interference. How do we stop it? Maybe you're as tired as I am of the whining that we hear from Donald Trump each morning before he goes into the court and each afternoon when he comes out of the court after having a a little sleep and letting off a few farts. Donald Trump himself, when you see him speaking after court, complaining that it's a disgrace that he is in court and it's, it's election interference, it's ironic, really, considering that the term election interference was originally coined to describe Russia interfering with the 2016 election to help get Trump elected. But that's another point. Here we're dealing with a man who is is clearly deteriorating, whose back is against the wall, who is decomposing before our very eyes. His syntax is all over the place. But that's just Donald Trump being Donald Trump, you know, with, with the inability to speak with any coherence, switching sentences around and losing his train of thought. The biggest issue for me here is that this is a wealthy white male complaining about being treated like everybody else in the country would be treated in this situation. He expects special treatment. The The notion of him being the head of the Trump organization and then the, the commander-in-chief has gone to his head. And that's why he has asked the Supreme Court to consider his presidential immunity, because he genuinely believes that he deserves to be above the law. And he then complains about the, the, the fact that this case should have been over and he thought it was going to be done today. Well, of course he didn't think it was going to be done today. He's just lying, lying to his base. And, and these videos that he's making, these interviews that he's giving in this echoey hallway are really just designed to be replayed on Fox and on Newsmax and, and for his base to see them on social media. They're not really designed to be taken seriously by anybody else because just by nature of the daily repetition of his complaining and saying it's a disgrace and that the judge is corrupted and all this stuff, nobody else is taking it seriously. And if he thinks that we are buying his complaints and considering them to be legitimate, then he really is dumber than he looks. And it's a disgrace. And then you have the other thing that maybe is even more disgraceful is the gag order, where I can't basically, I have to watch every word I tell you people. You ask me a question, a simple question, I'd like to give it, but I can't talk about it. Because this judge has given me a gag order and said you'll go to jail if you violate it. And then we have Donald Trump complaining about the gag order that he has brought about for himself by violating the rules of the court. Again, things that every other citizen in this country has to abide by if there is a requirement for them not to bully the uh, court staff or or the jury or to, to bully people giving evidence then you absolutely have to abide by that. That is the law of the land. But for some reason, Donald Trump, again, as a wealthy white male, decides that it doesn't apply to him, it shouldn't apply to him, and it is a disgrace. He then goes to describe the point of the gag order, kind of saying it out loud with like an inner monologue, saying, well, and then the judge gives me a gag order, which means, you know, you ask me a question, I'm not allowed to answer it. And if you pretend that a gag order is a blanket gag order, which is not, no one is going to believe you because people aren't that stupid. And secondly, clearly the issue here is that your brain is is so micro that you are unable to stop yourself from saying things that are very specific to this gag order. You, you're unable to process the fact that there are certain people that you are not allowed to criticize. But because he's not able to do that, because he doesn't have the the, the intellect, his lawyers have clearly said, look, just don't say anything. It's probably safer that way. Not something that Donald Trump is really capable of. He has gone his whole life never being told no. And apparently his counsel are having to kind of, you know, print off these sheets of paper with favorable articles so that he can look at something while he's 
sitting in court so he doesn't get bored. I mean, it really is like trying to entertain a toddler to stop them from crying. Somebody who doesn't understand how you would uh, not violate your gag order. He, he doesn't seem to be able to manage that side of it. But secondly, somebody who is... I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, is is trying to win an election to be the president of the United States, despite having no morals, despite disrespecting the law, despite lying. I mean, all of these things are lies, which means that, you know, he is not a man of God. He is not a man of his word. He is not a man who cares for the Constitution. He doesn't even know what the Constitution is. He was gassing American citizens when he was president and disappearing American citizens off the streets. I mean, Donald Trump is not a an expert in the Constitution. He has no respect for it whatsoever. This guy is trying to be the president, and we are now getting to see in full view what Donald Trump's presidency will look like. A, a whiny, moany, negative, angry person who is riddled with retribution and of course he will go back into the white house if he were to win and he will probably get judge merchan off the bench and, and make sure that he never works again i mean you can only imagine how donald trump is going to go after the people that he considers to be his enemies this is a court of law a court of law in manhattan in the united states of america that is you know very strict on protocol and they've already let him get away with, with you know, violating nine gag orders without throwing him in prison. And he knows that, you know, the next one could mean jail time. And so all this stuff about, well, you know, it would be worth it for me to go to prison. I mean, earlier in that sentence, he was saying it's a disgrace that he would send me to prison. It's a disgrace. And then within a few seconds, he's like, well, you know, but I would go to prison to protect our constitution. And frankly, you know what? Our Constitution is much more important than jail. It's not even close. I'll do that sacrifice any day. But what's happening here is a disgrace and the appellate courts ought to get involved. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And and we're not falling for this garbage because we understand the bigger picture. We recognize that this is a, a child who has thrown his toys out of the pram. He is somebody who refuses to abide by the law that you and I are required to abide by. And, you know, this is an, an, an election fraud case. This is not really a hush money case. It's election fraud. He, he purposely hid these payments so that it didn't damage his reputation as a presidential candidate. And he would absolutely do it again. He, he cannot even see how that is breaking the law because he doesn't care for the law. He is, doesn't respect the law, and he has never abided by the law. And, and only now, finally, after 50 years of this, he's being held to account. I'm Anthony Davis. You can catch me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel. You can find me every Wednesday co-hosting Uncovered with Ron Filipkowski, and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch. On the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.